Hagen from The Garden, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So I'm filming this the day before the 4th of July and I thought that this was the perfect time to film an updated garden tour for you guys. It's been two to three weeks since I filmed the last one. A lot has changed, the garden has really grown and we've opened up the new planting area and started planting that. So let's take a walk around the garden. So if you're new to my channel, I grow cut flowers in zone 5A in Northwest Iowa. I sell at our local farmer's market every week. I take special orders and we're renovating the neighboring building to become a future retail space. I started my cut flower business, I think I'm in my fourth year now, and I started off with just a very small area. I'm actually right where I am kneeling down. Half of this planting area was vegetables, half of it was cut flowers. This particular area of the garden is only a 30 by 60 in size. And I started off going to our local farmer's market, uh, I think mid-July, selling primarily snapdragons, zinnias, and sunflowers. And it has just completely blossomed from there. Uh, I now have numerous planting areas. We have bought the neighboring property. We're redoing the building next door. And so um, it's just really grown into this thing and it's awesome. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the backstory if you're new. So right where I am kneeling, this is my dahlia patch. I have five and a half planting rows of dahlias and I have 108 plants. They are all looking really good. In fact, the last video that I posted for you guys was me pinching my dahlias and it looks like I have some more that are ready to pinch. Dahlias are something that I started growing a couple years ago. I fell in love with them. I've tried to research what specific plants are more prolific than others and plant those those. I like to grow uh, medium, small to medium sized dahlias, usually the decorative or the ball shapes because for me those work best in bouquets. Uh, and for me here in Northwest Iowa, they usually start blooming end of August. September is the big month and they go right up till frost in October. So just down from the dahlia patch, I have a small two foot planting of zinnias. There was a little bit of extra space here and I try to use every square inch of this planting area accordingly. So I plugged three rows of zinnias in here and then just behind me, I have two more planting rows. I have some straw flower here and then there's some snapdragons behind me in this row and then one more row of snapdragons. Um, this is one of the areas where I have snapdragons planted. I have another spot that is inside my hoop house, which I will show you. And I just got another plug tray in of snapdragons that hopefully will be planted next week. And that hopefully will give me some late season blooms. All right, I wanna show you the outside beds of this fenced in garden. So we are on the south side of the garden and the north side of the neighboring building. This is the building that we are currently renovating. We've had it tuck pointed and you can tell the painter is in here working, um, but this particular planting bed will be planted up hopefully the end of next week. I need to wait until the painter is done painting and the HVAC gets put in right behind me, but then this area will be planted with um, definitely definitely Bupleurum because I just got a plug tray of that. I also got that plug tray of Snapdragons, uh, which should probably go out in full sun. And I have another plug tray of Dianthus and I'm just not sure where to plant that. Uh, Dianthus is a cool season flower, so I'm wondering if a little shade might not be bad for that. Um, in previous years, I have uh, direct sowed things like Dara and Ami in this bed. So I may plant that as well, but um, this planting space in the next week hopefully will become usable. And now we are looking back at the view that started this video. And this is the north side of the garden, but the south side of my building, which is my photography studio. And I have a few things along here. Um, ignore my air conditioner. You can't help where those are but I have a little patch of yarrow here. I may end up removing this after the season. It just isn't the best use of space, but for now I've been harvesting out of it. Next to that is a really good patch of status. It's really starting to put on some growth. This is the second plant planting of status. And as we move along, you can see the first planting of status is starting to bloom. Oh, maybe you can see if I didn't shade it. 
I harvested some out of here this morning and actually used it in a bouquet. So next week, hopefully, I will have a bunch of status to use. And then as we move along the bed, I have some Echinops. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, this is the blue color. And let me just back up. I want to show you how tall these plants are. They are about four feet tall. Maybe not the best placement, um, but I am not moving them because they look amazing and I cannot wait to use these in bouquets. And then the last spot in this area is a raised bed. This is the very first planting space that I created in this garden. Towards the back are peonies that I will be able to harvest off of in a couple years. And in the front is all Rubecchia, mostly the Sahara variety. I have one hollyhock in the back there, just because I love something tall in that corner. But you can see my Rubecchia is just starting to bud up. So that was a walk around the main area of what I call the fenced in garden because it is fenced off from the front, from Main Street, and then mostly fenced off from the back. I have a couple more planting areas in here I wanna show you, but just for reference, straight behind me is the parking lot on my property. My studio is this way. This is the empty lot that I turned into the garden and then the building we're renovating is that way. And uh, the parking lot, is a big area that we have been turning into growing space which you will see behind my studio i have large planting areas in my hoop house and then behind this building is the more newly developed area so let's finish this area and then i want to go walk you around all of the rest of the planting areas so right behind where i was just standing i have a very small patch of self-seeded bells of ireland they are looking a little bit droopy because we got some heavy rain and storms yesterday. Uh, I may need to go through and deadhead a bunch of these, but a lot of them will also perk up. And then this tall plant here, this is mountain mint. And this came back from last year. Last year was the first year that I planted it and I should be able to harvest it next week. Um, I like to wait until they have bloomed because that gives the strong stems that will not wilt but this is going to be a fantastic filler. And then as we move around, you can see I have a pergola here, my green stock, and then one more planting bed in this area. This is all celosia. I have a celway celosia and then a couple of floret varieties. Now to get out to the parking lot area where the rest of my planting areas are, you walk through the pathway under this trellis. This is a Titan squash tunnel. It's from Gardener's Supply. And this is where my mini pumpkins are growing. And they are already really starting to vine upwards. And just in this little area, I can see, oh my gosh, maybe 10 little pumpkins already. So that's really exciting. These have really started putting on growth with the heat we've been getting um, and with the rain we've been getting. Now this whole area used to be fenced off. We had to take part of this fence out because when we had the building tuck pointed, they had to bring the crane in or the lift, um, whatever it was called, uh, and they had to get through here. So we removed part of the fence and now that the whole area is ours, I think I'm going to be fencing off the entire property. So this area will probably remain open. Um, I will be planting on both sides of the trellis. And so this will be the pathway to get in and out, which I think makes it pretty cozy. Um, let's walk through the trellis and explore the rest of the garden. All right, so we're gonna walk through the trellis. Here's the little pumpkins that I was talking about. Super excited for those. This area uh, has really been under construction and needs a lot of work. Let me just flip around so you guys can see. This is an area, if you saw one of my recent videos that we've been working on drainage and reformatting it. I have a peach tree. And then you can see obviously the building is only half painted and the windows are covered but this area will completely transform. And if we back up, this area will all be gardens and join with my current cottage garden area. Now this area is currently filled with a lot of white, uh, Fama white pincushion flowers, yarrow, echinacea, there's cat mint here, um, the cat's pajama nepeta. I don't really cut off of this. This is more for the pollinators. 
and then we get into some more daisies, yarrow, lots more echinacea, and then at the very front, oh, something blew in in the storm. Have to clean that up. Um, in the very front, I have some newly planted Rebecca that is not yet blossoming. But this little cottage garden area is just so full and pretty and will continue all the way over to the new paved patio. So let's continue on the new property and keep in mind we're under construction so it doesn't look beautiful. Uh, the whole property, it curves back here. This is kind of the lumber slash junk construction pile, but now we get to the new planting space. So this is the area my dad and I have been working on for the last couple weeks. I had more dirt brought in. A lot of this was here last year. Um, this will all be fabriced. We were just letting the rain hit it to um, soften it up a little bit. Um, but see my yellow string here? Uh, that is marking four foot. So I will have a four foot wide open planting area. And this will mostly be sunflowers and some glads. And if we zoom in, you can see, well, some of the rocks in the soil uh, that unearthed themselves in the rain. So I'm going to have to take that out of the other areas. But you can see my sunflowers are coming up. And then I have a two foot pathway. And then in this area, which just got planted, these are seedlings I started. I have Gomfrina. And then from here down is Celosia. And then from there all the way down are all direct sowed zinnias that are all coming up. And then this is the area that I started creating last year. Uh, these are yarrow that were fall planted, currently covered with pollinators. I've been harvesting out of this area like crazy. Uh, but this area is just going to kind of all fill in nice and thick. So I have some more pincushion flowers in the front. There's a big drift of peonies here. Um, some penstemon, some hydrangeas. There's baptisia in here. And then as we go down, there are more echinacea and daisies. Uh, these I can cut off of. I haven't done a ton yet. Um, there's some blue sea holly back there, a viburnum, there will be hostas in the back. I'm not only going to use this to photograph for my photography studio, but I will be cutting out of this area as well. And then this planting area will expand all the way up to the patio, so all of this will eventually be planted as well if you can imagine that right now. All right, so let's look at a more pleasing looking area. Here again, we're back at the cottage garden. We're gonna spin around behind my photography studio. And this is where I have a little greenhouse. Now this got moved from the fenced in garden earlier this year. I currently have peppers and tomatoes growing. In fact, let's look in the window. One of my panels blew out in a storm. My husband started so many peppers, I just couldn't bear to part with all of them. So I have some growing in here and a few tomatoes, which are also looking really good. But this is the whole planting area that we developed last year. Now you're probably thinking, well, those beds are just full of grass. Yes, they are. Uh, every time it rains, this whole area fills with water. So the white flags that are right out here I am going to have a pit dug that will um, have a drainage pipe down in and hopefully that pit will drain the water out of this area and these beds will be usable. We're gonna make these beds taller, add more soil, but as of right now, they hold too much water and they just don't grow anything except the grass and weeds, of course. Uh, these four are usable. So in the first one is a patch of fever few. Uh, these are done. I need to go ahead and cut all these off so I can get a second flush. Uh, this one back here is straw flower that is just starting to bloom. And then over here, there's some larkspur, larkspur that is pretty much done. And then this one clearly needs to be weeded. Um, but these are some honeywort plants that I direct seeded and look like are putting on some growth. And then, Let's take a walk through this big growing space next. So this entire growing space was a rock parking lot and this is what we developed last year and it has been so great for my cut flower business. 
I don't know how I had enough flowers to sell before I had this space. Uh, so just going row by row, in the front here I have a lot of feverfew and then also some Veronica that are just starting to bloom, not super tall, and these are first year plants and so I don't know that I'll really harvest off of them this year anyway, but definitely next year. And at the end, more feverfew that needs to be cut back as well. The second row, there is some Ami down at the beginning, uh, Craspedia. This is a really nice patch of Ageratum. In fact, we're starting to get some really nice blooms. I didn't have Ageratum last year and I realized how much I missed it. So I'm excited to have it this year. And then as we continue down this row, this is all Eryngium that will be harvested off of next year. Oh my gosh, look at these weeds. These grew in a few days. I've got to get out here again. Uh, but anyway, this area is more blue and white Fama pincushion flowers. And these also will be for harvesting next year. And the last row, all the way from this end, all the way down to the other end, is all zinnias. This is my main zinnia patch, and I depend on this all the way to the end of summer. Now I will have that other zinnia patch this year, so I'll have double the zinnias that I did last year, and I probably still will want more. And the last area that I need to show you guys is the hoop house. Let's go inside. Actually, before we do that, let's look at the bed next to the hoop house. Here are two successions of sunflowers. This is the second one, that's the first one. And then down the way I have this is some celosia that I use for foliage. Amaranth that I have just pinched. I have some cosmos. And then mahogany splendor hibiscus. Okay, now we will go into the hoop house. All right. I also don't know what I did without this area. Now this middle section was ranunculus earlier this season and boy was I glad I had those. I'm definitely doing that again next year. Uh, now I did direct seed a bunch of crops in here. They're not coming up. I don't think they were getting sufficient water so I have since then laid out these soaker hoses. I think I may just replant this area but I'll figure that out next week. But as far as what else is in here, I had some really nice fever few. It is also too far gone. Uh, the pollinators are sure enjoying it. So I'm gonna cut all that back next week. There's a few in here that are still nice. I could probably harvest those today. Oh, and some hornets, yikes. Um, so this is the deep blue campanula, which is looking beautiful, but it's very short. I had a really nice tall stems of this earlier and I didn't know if I would get long stems again or if I would get short stems if I just let them branch. Clearly they're short, so I don't know if it was worth keeping or not. Um, I may use some of these next week for my mini bouquets and then I'll assess the situation. I may just rip these out and direct sow something in here as well. Uh, next to that, I have a small patch of Dianthus. It's looking really nice. And then this is my Lysianthus, also with some grass growing up. But those plants are looking pretty good. And then along the other side, I have a patch of snapdragons that I have been cutting out of. I have some stock that, if I zoom in, looking pretty good. I think these are the quartet variety, so I'm just waiting to see if they start branching. Stock, though, doesn't love the heat, so we will see. And then this is the white campanula, which I was waiting to see if this would branch taller. It's taller than the purple, but still not super tall. Um, and then that is basically it. There's my tiller. So overall, I am extremely happy with my hoop house production this year. Uh, this I just need to get replanted. I'll have nice things harvested out of here. I'll have snapdragons. I'll have more fever few. I just need to figure out what to do with these two campanula areas. If you guys have any ideas, comment down below. All right, so that's gonna do it for this garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what everything is looking like the 1st of July. And I will make sure to keep you updated on building renovations, harvesting, and everything throughout the rest of the growing season. So stay tuned for a lot more. We'll see you soon.